So I often get phone calls from people that, well, the first thing is, do we have a bed? And the second thing is, are you open during this COVID? And what are you doing about the COVID? How is it affecting you? You know, we phoned somewhere else and they're closed. They won't take anybody in or, you know, it's just, there's so many, so many different rules and regulations coming out about COVID. So the, the government has given us restrictions here. We're restricted. Um, um, people have to wear a face mask for the first two weeks. Um, we have to self-isolate as best they can. We've, we have a couple of people in come in from the States and they have to isolate for 14 days away from everybody. Fortunately, we have a, a big building here. Only, you know, grandiose and alcoholic could build. And I've got rooms over there that haven't seen daylight for a long time. And so I have room to isolate people. So, but it's incredible that we could get somebody in and they'll stay in a room where they have access outside, but they'll stay there for two weeks waiting for a phone call from the border because the border said, we're going to phone and check up on you to make sure that you aren't where you're not supposed to be. Of course, the border's never phoned. But I'm sure they might sometime. We have other restrictions here. Mostly we put on ourselves. You know, the government requires uh, social distancing as best you can. But we've implemented many different things. We've built a couple of walls downstairs so that when the public do come in, or not the public, when a new person comes in, he's actually isolated totally away from the uh, current participants and then they have to stay in their room the nurse checks them out they stay in detox for two or three days depending on the drugs they're coming off of and then when they go into the general population they have to wear a face mask for two weeks and right in our reports every day it says John ha has to keep a face mask on until December 6th or December 8th or whatever so he's, uh, he follows this full two weeks of isolating him from arrest, even though he's in the same room, but he has to wear a face mask while he's with everybody else. Um, every day, the staff, and the staff are my biggest concern here, because they're the ones that are going in and out. The participants that are here, we've got 20 people here, they don't go anywhere. We no longer go, we used to go out shopping every Wednesday, we no longer do that. We used to go to meetings. We no longer do that. We don't go off for property. Anybody that comes in here has to stay on property <clears throat> until they're finished, unless it's an emergency or something. But, but really, everybody stays here. The only people that are going back and forth are staff. So every morning, the staff comes. We check their temperature, or they actually self-check their temperature. And then, once they do that, they write down um, what their temperature was, whether they're okay, if they have any indication of a higher temperature, of course they go home. So that's, uh, that's the main thing is staff. We really have to watch staff because one of their children might be at school and the school shuts down, they get isolated, we get, it's, it's just bizarre. It goes on and on. How do you follow all these rules and regulations? So we're just trying to isolate as much as we can. Thank God we haven't had anybody in here with COVID and hopefully it stays that way. And, and, and that's how COVID's affecting us. Hopefully this vaccine is an actual, actual vaccine. And, and because this is kind of a healthcare thing, although you wouldn't know it because we're not government and we certainly don't get uh, the response from government we should get and supplying us with supplies of that. However, hopefully we'll get vaccinated in that first group that comes. So that's how COVID's affecting us. God bless.